Good day. I am Jade Brown, Communications Specialist with the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project. And welcome to another episode of Progress Report. Of course, Progress Report is where we take a look at the state of works at St. Jude Hospital. Today, we are at the Ministry of Infrastructure, where we will be speaking to the lead supervisor on that project to find out the progress of works, some of the challenges, and what people of the South can look forward to with the reopening of the St. Jude Hospital. My name is Anzu Shalmain. I'm the Director of Works here at the Department of Infrastructure with the responsibility for all of the government building assets, um, which would include all of the government buildings, uh, the playing fields, uh, and also we look at the mandate of the other government um, departments to assist them with the project management and implementation of both the new projects and maintenance of the other projects, including their buildings. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit about the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project and the work that is being done there. Can you explain the state of works right now? Okay. As you are aware, the St. Jude Hospital, um, we have been mandated to do the supervision along with the Department of Economic Development. Uh, so the Department of Infrastructure along with Economic Development is overseeing the project management and also the execution of the project. We are looking at phase one of the project, which would include the cleaning up of the St. Jude Hospital and the fencing of the, of the property. So this is basically what happens on the phase one, which is a three month project. So we are now one month into the project. Okay. And what, how has the work progressed thus far? Where are we at? Oh, the work, the work is progressing nicely because um, what you have, you, we have, the main contractor has, looked at the project and we have a number of subcontractors so simultaneously we are able to get work ongoing on all of the buildings in terms of the cleaning aspect which includes the pressure washing the removing of all of the old material plus on the outside of the of the building we are doing all of the cleaning of all of the vegetation and getting rid of all of the water as best as possible so we looking at the drainage as well um, i would say now into one month into the project we are about 85 percent completed um, the fencing aspect of it is what is expected to take a little more time um, the procurement for that is already ongoing the material should be here pretty soon i think last week it was being shipped so we are well on our way to achieving that first phase of the project, which is the cleaning. Okay, you made mention of subcontractors. Um, let's talk a bit about that and the importance of including members of the community. Because on, upon visiting the, the site, I noticed that there were many of the workers are from the area. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see, it's important that when you execute a project of that nature, that you include the persons and the surrounding in the project. So it would, what we have agreed with the, the main contractor is that most of the subcontractors would be from the environs. So you have basically seven subcontractors on the site and each of those subcontractors probably have like 12, 13 guys with them. And so the, 
you get that sense that the, 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 the work is being spread without, throughout the community where persons are able to identify with what is happening. So it would not be a case where you come up from castries with a, a contractor and a whole heap of guys and you start executing work and the persons within the environment don't have any input. In other words, they're getting nothing out of it. So as it stands and now, the relationship between the, the, the environment, the persons in the environment and the contractor and the execution of the work is kind of cohesive. So you don't have um, this feeling of persons being left out of work that is happening within their area. Okay. So this is what we're really looking at in terms of executing the works and making them sort of feel that they are part and parcel of the entire thing. You know, sort of, um, they get more buy-in, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, um, your very routine visits to, to the site, um, how, has the, how has the reconstruction impacted the people in the area, the small businesses in the area? Oh, well, I know you have been to the site as well, so you you understand what happens. Um, yeah, you do not have all of the vendors that were there before. In other words, the inside of the compound, there are no vendors on the compound itself. But the leading into the compound, all of these small shops along that area are now vibrant. You have persons having um, their Friday afternoon activities when the guys leave work. Um, you have the guys purchasing lunch. So you have shops like um is it Susie's down the road providing lunch for the guys um on a daily basis so it has um created a little economic um viability for some of the persons with the shops on the road um, and then you can see it in them when you stop by and if you talk to them they are now um making a little more money than they used to when everything was just dead so i think it's 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 having a positive impact, um, even in the execution phase of the works. Um, hopefully, once the facility is completed, I mean, you would expect to have a lot more economic activity um, in and around um, the the facility. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I think it has started to impact them positively. Okay, you mentioned earlier that we are near uh, approximately 40, eighty-five percent complete. Mm -hmm. Completed, phase, yeah, phase, phase, phase one. one. Um, are you, is this something that you expected or are you impressed by that? Uh, to tell you the truth, um, the original contract period under the proposal was four months. But um, we have looked at it and reviewed based on the progress of works and we anticipate that the three months would actually be enough to execute phase one. So yes, we are quite impressed with what has happened in one month period in terms of transforming. I mean, if you have before photographs um, or, or you've been there when we started on the 1st of November and up to Friday, you would have seen that it's a vast difference. Um, so yeah, we are actually impressed as a project management team to see the manner in which the contractor has progressed in one month. I think they are doing well. Okay, great. Let's talk a bit about some challenges that you mm -hmm. may have experienced thus far. Mm. As with any, any project of that nature, which is a civil engineering project, although the, it's a building project, but then you have the civil engineering aspect, which is the outside works. One of the challenges we had in the early part of November was the constant rainfall. So the back, towards the back of the building is quite waterlogged, towards the, the tanks. So the external work um, did take some time to start. But in the last week and a half or so, we've had some good sunshine, some good weather. Um, so the contractor has attempted to deal with that aspect of the works. Um, the place is still quite um, waterlogged um, to the back uh, because of the limited drainage that is on the site as we speak. Um, so that is basically one of the, the challenges that the contractor would have had in, in his execution. Um, 
I think the other challenge is the transitioning of all of the, the materials that was lying around. And we had quite a challenge in, in getting the proper arrangement between the contractor and the ministry as to how do we remove those materials and store them away, away safely. Um, the team at the St. Jude Hospital have been instrumental in actually assisting us with all of the material that was inside the building. Because you'd appreciate those buildings have quite a bit of material in there. And um, to be able to get all of them out and to keep a, a log as to what is in stock and how you're storing them could be um, quite a challenge. Uh, the other challenge that we had in the in the clinical ward, I think it was, yeah, was the bats. Yes, so that one was a bit of a challenge for the contractor. Um, so the fumigation aspect of it has not taken place. Um, so what they're trying to do is to try to, one, to get the bats out, and two, to be able to keep them away. And you, you would appreciate that the, the building is quite open because there are no windows and doors in, in that section as, as yet. So we now have to resort to boarding up all of the areas once we have cleaned the building. Um, you have quite a bit of sheep as well on, on the project. So that has lessened as well. So there are minor little challenges. Um, nothing that the contractor has not dealt with effectively. Um, so we're hoping that um, going into the next two months of the project, we would not have those issues. Okay. Yeah. Um, my last question would be always for the people. Um, you know, it, it's been some time. It's been quite a few years um, since people have been waiting and expecting a completion of the completion of the St. Jude Hospital. How, and I'm just speaking about phase one here, how confident are you? Well, in terms of delivering the project, we are, we are confident that we deliver in phase one. That is for sure. Phase one is basically, like I said, three months project and we are one month into the project. We are about 85% completed. Um, what would determine the deliverance of the entire hospital is that if we can move seamlessly into phase two, once the government of St. Lucia um, can move seamlessly into phase two, um, there shouldn't be an issue in completing um, and the hospital. What would be disappointing is that if we get out of phase one and then we stop again, um, then you may have what you have cleaned in preparation for installing and moving along with phase two. You don't want it to get back to a stage where you now have to come back and do cleaning again. So that is important and that's critical that the project moves seamlessly from this phase into the continuing of, of, of the hospital so that the project can be delivered in, 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 a, in a working fashion, should we say, to the, to the, to the people of St. Jude, people of Viewfort, and um, St. Lucia in general. Any last words? Um, I want to think that, um, like you say, it's been a long time that this project has been going back and forth. I want to think that um, we are now in a position to continue with this project as we have started, um, in the manner that we have started, um, with the progress that we are making. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that if we continue into phase two, that we would not be repeating what has happened before, that we can deliver this project on time and within the budget that um, the government has set for us to deal with.